And as always, it's a pleasure to be here before you on the Lord's Sabbath day to edify each other in the word of God. I know you all was, was not expecting to see me today. Uh, Brother Jeremiah was supposed to be here, but he couldn't make it. So the Lord always have a ram in the bush. And I want to thank Brother Ronnie for agreeing to read for me today if Brother Jimmy hadn't showed up. Uh, so we already got these brothers ready to step up and do the, do the service of the Lord, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But, but brothers and sisters, today's lesson is fruits of faith. Fruits of faith. Because most religious people, and I'm saying religious people because that's who uh, uh, really count. The, the, the sinners, the people out in the streets, they don't care anything about this. But most religious people don't really understand that their faith is evidenced by their behavior or their fruit. A lot of people believe that all you have to do is confess with your mouth and you will be saved. They go to Romans, the 10th chapter, 10 and 9, and they read that and they figure that's all you have to do. And they believe that because that is what is being taught to them. Most churches teach that all you have to do is confess that Jesus came in the flesh and you will be saved. But it takes more than that. And, and the people that believe that and sticking with that, they are being deceived. Mm -hmm. But your fate will be determined. Your fate will be determined by your fruit, by your behavior. That's how the Lord would know that you are his servant or not. By your fruit, by how you act, by your obedience, by you, your obedience. And most, because most people think that there's two gods, or God got meek and mild in his old age. You know, they, they think that God of that Old Testament is the father, that old, mean, vengeful God that destroy everything and everybody. Yeah. And that God of that New Testament, Jesus, is that kind of gentler God. But they don't realize that the same God that was in the Old Testament, it's the same God that they're dealing with in that New Testament. Mm -hmm. And he said that he, I have an everlasting covenant that I will share with my blood. So when he asked, when he, what he told you to do in the Old Testament, he expects you to do it even through the New Testament and on now through this time. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. But we're going to get this started in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Because you have faith in God. If you believe in God, you're going to bring forth fruits of that faith. And by that, God knows that you are his servant. He knows that you are his servant. But uh, we're going to pick this up in Matthew 7. We're going to start with verse 13. Matthew 7 and verse 13. 7 and 13. Go ahead, brother. Enter ye in at the straight gate. The Lord is telling you. This is Jesus talking. He already, he's telling us. This is how easy the Lord makes this thing. He's telling you which gate to enter into. Go ahead. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Because wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leads to destruction or that lake of fire. So that lets you know you don't always follow the crowd. Just because a lot of people is going that route don't mean that's the right route to take. You got to make sure, examine yourself, make sure you're doing what thus saith the Lord. That's right. That's why so many people, tomorrow is going to be a, you can't get into the buildings because of uh, be so packed with people. Wide is that gate, and many go that route. Go ahead. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life. Okay, but narrow is the way that leadeth into life. Only a few people take that narrow road. And why is that? Because on that narrow road, that's that, that's that discipline road. That's that obedient road. That's the road the Lord say take. And a lot of people want to do what they want to do. They want to be able to 
do whatever they want to do and still think that they're going to be raptured off to heaven. They want to be able to come as they are and stay as they are. They don't want to change. So what they do, they go searching for someone who's going to scratch their itching ear. Mm -hmm. They go searching for someone who's going to say what they want to hear. What I call it, they go preacher shopping. Like people go doctor shopping. They keep going to doctor to doctor until they find a doctor that says, yeah, you're right, you're sick. But that main one might be the quack. So that's, they go shopping, but go ahead. 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep, sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. He say, beware of false prophets. Beware of somebody telling you you don't have to obey the Lord. And no, they're not going to come up right up until you could, they, they, they come in sheep clothing. They come as a servant of the Lord. They're not going to come right up to you and say, say, you don't have to do nothing that the Lord say. You don't have to do any of that stuff. They're going to say, well, you know, he nailed that old stuff to the cross. That's that old book. That's the same package just wrapped up differently. They're telling you, they telling you, you don't have to obey the Lord. And the Lord, if, if, if Jesus say, I am the light, I am the way, I am the truth, and they're not bringing you the truth, that means they're a false prophet. That's right. But they're going to come to you in sheep. In sheep's clothing. But in what they are wood because they are destroying you. You never saw anybody. If, 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 if someone was to come up to you and say, look, I'm a devil worshiper. I follow Satan. Come follow me. Get on this path I'm on. I'm going to lead you to destruction. You're going to burn in the lake of fire forever. Don't that sound good? You're not going to follow them. I'm going to say, this sucker crazy. Just like a salesman, a car salesman, you go to a Ford dealer and say, I need a truck. He's not going to say, yeah, I got a truck. But you know, Chevy got the best trucks. He's going to say, no, you, you come to the right place. Ford got the number one truck selling truck in America. You know? That's what they do. They, they, they're just baiting you in, but they're leading you to destruction. The Lord is warning us of this, but go ahead. 16. You should know them by their fruits. You should know them by their fruits. You could know them by their behavior. You, 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 you would know them by what they say. If they're not saying, obey the Lord, do what thus saith the Lord, then you know their fruit is corrupt. Go ahead. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And if they're a good tree, they're going to bring forth good fruit. I don't care how they try to conceal or hide themselves. Eventually, just watch them long enough. Eventually, their true nature will show. If you, if you walk up and there's a, a, a and there, there's some ducks in the floor, and then there's a snake in the middle of the duck, that snake might lay there, he might quack, 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 pretend he's a duck. But as soon as he get the squirming, if he's not wobbling like a duck, as soon as he gets squirming, you're going to know he's going to show his true nature. He's going to show his true nature. So if you could, they could say anything with their mouth. They could, they could deceive us. I tell people all the time, it don't benefit you to try to deceive me. You know, I can't do nothing to you or for you as for that eternal life or eternal damnation. It's the Lord. He sees. You can't deceive him. I was saying another day, I was up here a few weeks ago and a, a, a gentleman came up. I was, I was giving him to leave. Preacher man, preacher man. And I had to check myself because I started to get in my car pretend like I didn't hear him and drive off. So we all got to look at ourselves and stuff. I said, well, let me see what the brother wants. That's what the brother wants. And he came up, preach man. Uh, you go here. All right, now he see me locking up, saying to myself, so yeah, I, I, I'm a member here. Me too. When y'all have service? <laughs> like same as always. On the Sabbath. Oh, that's good. That's good. Because I'm a member too. I'm a member too. I go here. But, uh, 
Let me see. I ran into a little hard time. Can, can, can you give me a few dollars? And he went to start telling me about all his. I said, brother, hold up. You don't have to give me your life story, your sob story. You don't have to try to convince me, deceive me. I'm going to give you what I want to give you regardless. You know, if I don't want to give it to you, I'm not. I'm, so I'm going to do what I'm going to do. So you don't have to give me all that. Well, brother, I really appreciate that, brother. I had a few dollars when I gave him a few dollars. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you this Sabbath. Will y'all have Sabbath service again? <laughs> I said, brother, just come on. Saturday at noon. And we'll be here. But he think he was deceiving me. He think he was getting over on me. He wasn't getting over on me. I was doing what I was going to do regardless. But it's the Lord we have to be concerned about not deceiving. But you would know a tree by its fruits. But go ahead, brother. 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. A good tree cannot, if you are truly a good person, truly a good person in your heart, no matter how bad you want to do, how you, you, somebody, there's a sister in here. Every time she come up, when she, 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 she does something, somebody asks her to do it, she do it, they say, oh, I'm tired. They always come and ask me to do that. I ain't doing no more. I'm not, I'm not cooking anymore. Tell the next time they ask her. <laughs> and she, yeah, I'd volunteer. I'd do it. <laughs> but a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Just like if you don't know what a tree is, if you walk up to a tree and it's barren, there's nothing on it, and you don't know what kind of tree that is, then you look on the ground and you see a bunch of apples on the ground, you're not going to say, that, well, that must be an orange tree. I don't see one orange on the ground. But you could tell a tree by its fruit. But let's go further. Let's go to uh, 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 Hebrews the 11th chapter. Let's go to the faith chapter. And when God called me this morning and asked me could I uh, fill in for Brother Jeremiah, I told him, of course, brother, you know. I can't say no to the Lord. And I tell him, I'll I fill in for him. And I'll be good. I won't be nading and quining and all that. I'm Y'all know I get a little crazy at times. Some brothers have to keep their hand on that button and mute me out. And I'm going to keep it. We're going to keep it straight today. But Hebrews 11, we're going to pick it up at 1. 11 and 1. This is so-called faith ch chapter everybody likes to go to. But they read right over it. They must be doing like Buddha say, reading between the lines, because they're not reading the word of God. But go ahead, brother, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For, it, for by it the elders attained a good report. So the elders retained a good report because of their faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. You believe in something even though you have no evidence of it. And because you believe in it and have no evidence of it, you're hoping that you will get that war. But, but hold your space here. Hold your space here. Let's go to Romans the 8th chapter. Let's see what, what, what you're hoping for. Back up to Romans 8. And we're going to read one verse. Let's see by our faith what we're hoping for. Why we keep going. Why we keep enduring all the things that goes on in the world today. Like brothers say, every time you turn on the TV, bad news, breaking news, breaking news every morning, no matter what channel you turn to, breaking news, somebody got shot, somebody got stabbed. How come it can't ever be? Breaking news, somebody just fed all the homeless in Memphis. But it's never that. So we going, there's a lot out there we're going through. But this is why we maintain. This is what we hope for. This, this is what that hope is about. Go ahead, brother. Verse 24. For we are saved by hope. But we are saved by hope. We have faith even though there's no evidence of it because we're hoping for that salvation. We haven't seen anybody, anybody get into the kingdom. Haven't seen anybody raised up from the dead in that spiritual body. The only person we know about is Jesus, but we haven't seen, we have no concrete evidence of that. 
But because we believe in the Lord, we believe in it because he said it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. He said it was so, but go ahead. But hope that is seen is not hope. But hope that is not seen is not hope. Because you see it, you already know what that, that's ascertainable. I can, I can get that. So that's not hope. You're just working for a goal. Go ahead. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Because well, if you see it, why you hope for it? You know it's possible. You know you can get it. If you want a, a brand new Mercedes, and you at the dealer, you're looking at the Mercedes, and you see somebody drive off with one, you say, oh, he got one, I can get one too. All I got to do is work for it. So now that's not, a, you're not hoping you can get one. You're just working mm -hmm. towards your goal. Because you see it, it's, it, you know it's possible. There's no doubt in your mind it's possible. All you got to do is just want it. But faith is not like that. Faith is not like that. But, le but let's uh, go back to Hebrews 11 chapter. But that is what we're hoping for. As the book says, we're hoping for a better resurrection. Hebrews 11, and we're going to skip to 7. And read about these, some of these patriarchs and matriarchs that had faith. And because of their faith, all they got for it is a good report. But that's what we want to get. This good report is not with man. This good report is with the Lord. And that's what we want to get. Hebrews 11 and 7. Go ahead, brother. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, God told him, look, Noah, it's going to rain. You better go out there and build that boat. Noah was a farmer. He didn't know anything about building a boat, but he had faith. He believed in the Lord. Go ahead. Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. And became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Because Noah, because he, he became heir of the righteousness of faith because everybody on the other side of the flood, except Noah and his family, was destroyed. They were destroyed. But Noah, he believed, he had faith. He probably had never seen an ark before. He was a farmer. The Lord said, Noah, go get some sheet and wood. Noah probably was sheet and wood. You know, I never grew a sheet and wood tree. But he had faith. And the Lord said, because it's going to rain, I'm going to flood this earth. It'll probably clear and sunny outside. But the Lord said, Noah believed it, and he went and he built that boat. He didn't wait till it started raining. I said, I ain't going to worry about it. The Lord will deliver me. He just did. He told you to build that boat. Mm -hmm. But Noah believed it. That's right. But skip to uh, 17 and go ahead. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now, Abraham, our father, Abraham, because he believed he was willing to offer up his son Isaac. Even though the Lord told Abraham, your heir, Isaac, your only son, is going to be the heir to the promise. But then he turned around to Abraham to offer him up as a sacrifice. And Abraham did not waver. He got that boy, got that wood, and, and was heading out to do it. Because he knew he had faith. He knew either the Lord was going to do some step in or the Lord was going to raise him up. Because he knew the Lord cannot lie. If the Lord say he was going to do it, he was going to be the heir to the promise. He was going to be the heir to the promise. And that's the kind of faith we have. To have. Well, I'm, let me back up. Don't sacrifice your children. But that's kind of Faith we have to have. When the Lord asks us to do something, we got to be willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And brothers who've married with children, can you imagine your only son going to sacrifice your only son? And not just you going to sacrifice your only son, but the trip back home to deal with your wife. <laughs> Abraham was willing to endure that wrath. So when he walked in that tent, Sarah, where that boy? Huh? You know how we get we get stupid, huh? And women, we do that because we need a minute to think about what we're going to say. We're not as sharp as you all are. But that, he, he was ready to endure that because he had faith. And that's the kind of faith we're working toward to get that kind of strength. 
But skip the 24 and go ahead. Let's read about some more of these people. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And Moses, when he got of age, he, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He, he refused to live a life of royalty. Go ahead. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He was rather to be with the Hebrew slaves than live in the palace and live like a prince with Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that was a greater reward. He had faith that there was a greater reward for him. And, and that's absolutely right. That the pleasure of sin is only for a moment. It's only for a moment. It's not going to last. It's going to either, either it's going to go away or you're going to pass away. But it's only for a moment. But go ahead, brother. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. So he, he esteemed the reproach of Christ. Christ was more important than any riches that Egypt could offer him. And Egypt had worldwide rule at that time. I mean, they, they had everything. They, Moses could have had everything earthly but it wasn't worth it it wasn't mm. worth it uh skip the 31 uh, did you finish that go ahead finish that then skip the 31 for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward and he had respect for his reward he wasn't willing to give up his reward for no amount of money and sometimes we have to ask ourselves what are we willing to give up our reward for so we can wash our car on a Saturday. Well, man, you know, I will come to y'all class. I will worship on Saturday, but that's the best time to go to the car wash and get your car beamed up. You know, I got to have it. I got to have that candy shining for, for Saturday night. You know, well, I could, you know, Sunday, everything closed, so I got to do it on Saturday. So you're going to give up your reward because you can go shopping on Saturday? But that's just how it is. Even I was willing to give up my reward when I first came into this thing, when Bull and them used to come down. And Bull and them were teaching, they were doing a dietary law. And I was cool. I didn't eat duck anyway. I just eat chicken. Catfish, nah, that's, I, I can give up catfish. It tastes like dirt. You have to drown it in hot sauce. Then Bull would say, shrimp, what? <laughs> you can't eat shrimp. What's wrong with this boy? What's wrong with this man? I ready to fight. I'm going to give up my reward for some jumbo shrimps. When he said shrimps, I was through listening. <laughs> I was just sitting there. Got home that night. We still would, we wouldn't do nothing until sundown. And I knew every Sabbath, as soon as the sun go down, my wife would run to the store. She ran to the store. I went to the back of the refrigerator. I got me some. It wasn't even jumbo shrimp. It was popcorn shrimp. <laughs> got my shrimp, threw it in the microwave right quick. I warmed them up. So I can't eat my shrimp. That man don't know what he's talking about. Can't nothing be wrong with these shrimp, good as it tastes. <laughs> warmed my shrimp up. I knew my wife would come back soon. I ate them up right quick, jumped back in the bed like I'd never been anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> she walked in there. Them shrimps and everything on my stomach and everything else on my mind was coming up. <laughs> I was throwing up. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. But that was the last time I ate some shrimp. But I wasn't giving up my shrimp. And the Lord beat it out of me. <laughs> so we got to ask ourselves, what are we willing to give our, up our reward for? We got to be strong in this thing. We got to say nothing is worth. We got to be like Moses and Abraham. And Noah, nothing is worth our reward. Nothing is worth it. But where are we? You finish that? Verse 31. Verse 31. Go ahead, brother. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Because the Lord does not respect the person. Rahab the harlot, Rahab the streetwalker, she got a reward coming because she believed and she hid he had those, those, those spies, when, the, when, they, when they went to, to spy out the land, she hid them so the folks wouldn't find them and kill them because she believed that there was a greater reward 
And because of that, she also has reward. You know, so, so much for those people with, those, those church people who think they're too good to deal with other people. You know, they, they, hold it, they turn their nose up to them. We know how it is when we go to church, when, when, when we go to the store on Sunday in our everyday clothes, and they got their Sunday best on. Mm -hmm. And they look at us like we are heathens, you know. Uh, man here buying stuff, and he'd be trying to go to church. That's right. If he want to tell me, it's your Sabbath, you shouldn't even be in here. You shouldn't even see me in here. Mm -hmm. I didn't see you in the store yesterday. But the Lord is not a respecter of person. Skip to 35. Women received their dead, their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain the better resurrection. I mean, some was, was tortured, they were beaten, they were thrown in prison, but they knew there was a better reward for them, and that's what they were waiting on. That's what they were looking for. But skip to 39. And these all attain, having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. And they went through much worse than we can ever go through, and they have not received the promise. But because the Lord provided something better for, for all of us, we're all going to get that promise at the same time. Nobody has received that promise as of yet. Nobody. We're all going to get it at the same time. But they had faith, and they was willing to endure and suffer and go through some things because of it. But let's go with Matthew to 7th chapter. Matthew 7. But, but these, uh, these matriarchs and patriarchs that went through that stuff, they believed. And they had hope through their, through their faith. And their fruit showed it. Matthew 7 and 21. Seven and 21. And these are the ones who have faith, but no works, no fruit to go along with it. Matthew 7 and 21. Go ahead, brother. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But they'll tell you, all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. And this is Jesus. He's telling you not everyone that said, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom. So you can say anything with your mouth. That's why the Lord said he searched the rain. He looked at the inner man and one man to see what's inside. He look, at, he look at you, uh, at your fruits to see, see if you're a servant of his. But go ahead, brother. But he that doeth the will of my father. But he that doeth the will of my father. Now put your space place here. Let, let's go to Romans, the second chapter. Let's see what the will of the father is. And it is plain and simple. Romans 2, and we're going to read 1 verse 13. Romans 2 and 13. Because people tell you, you got all this stuff you have to do for the, it's the will of the Father. You got to send in a hundred out there, send you a little prayer cloth, and you got to get the prayer cloth and, and lay it across your bed and run around the bed ten times. Lord don't require all that. Lord don't require all that. Romans 2 and 13. This is the will of the Father. Go ahead, brother. For not the hearers of the law, but not the hearers of the law, go are ahead. just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Not the hear. You, you got to do more than just hear this thing. You have to do it. You have to obey. That's the will of the Father. Obey. You can sit in here. You can listen to this stuff and hear it all the time. But if you're not, not practicing it, if you're not doing it, what good is it? If you want a, if you hungry, you want a, a, a steak. But you don't know how to cook it, so you get the instruction and you read, oh, so this is how you prepare a steak. And that's all you do, just read the instruction. <laughs> You're still hungry. 
Because you got to do more than just hear. You got to get up and do it. You got to obey. It's obedient. Now, we always invite people. They come. They listen. And that's good because even if a little bit seeps in and it's planted, that's excellent. That's excellent. But they're not doing this thing until they get to that point where they're doing this, doing the will of the Lord. They're obeying him, doing his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. That's when those dividends start to kick in. That's when they fruits will start to show. But that is the will of the Father. Let's go back to Matthew 7. Pick it back up at 22. But he who do the will of the Father which is in heaven, they're the ones that will enter into the kingdom. And you have to ask yourself, if the will of the Father is obedient, and all the stuff the Lord say do in that old book is nailed to the cross, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? If you don't have to do that stuff, how can you? So it doesn't make sense. It's contradict itself. But uh, go ahead, brother, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And the people that they got there, I rebuked you in the name of the Lord. I rebuked you. You infidel. You heathen. Get away from me. I, you know, I got Jesus on my side. Now just get away from me. I don't want to hear that. Tell you all the time. Get, I don't want to hear that stuff. I don't want to hear that stuff. I know Jesus. I got Jesus on my side. Get out of my face. Let me eat my pork chop. You know. But go ahead, brother. And in thy name you have cast out devils. Even in my name, in that name cast out devils. But even Satan has his disciples, has his minions, has, has his prophets going out there. But go ahead. And in thy name done many wonderful works. In thy name done many, many wonderful works. So this, they should be straight. They done many wonderful works. Maybe they did do a lot of wonderful works. But it wasn't the works that the Lord said do. No, they didn't do what thus said the Lord. Right. They did a lot of wonderful works in the eyes of man. And they got their glory from man. Mm -hmm. And that's their reward. That's right. But that's not what we're working for. We want our reward from the Lord. But what the Lord going to tell them? Go ahead. 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ooh, well, isn't that a hard pill to swallow? You got people been going to church all their life. Every time the door open, they in there. They working on this salvation as far as they know. They doing everything the pastor tell them to do. Then some. When they go in there, they, they tied twice what they supposed to tie. Doing the pastor love offering, they, they give it they all they got. Then the pastor wife love offering, they giving her all they got. They doing everything. They working diligently. But when that time comes, when they stand before judgment, and the Lord tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. How do you think they're going to feel? I know what I would do if that was me, and I'm, I done did all this, and I'm standing up there, and then the Lord say that to me. I'm saying, wait a minute, Lord. Hold the manuals up for a moment. Let me go find Pastor Get More Cheese. <laughs> just, just give me a few moments before you put me in there. That's going to be a hard pill to swallow. But let's go further. Let's go further. Let's go to Titus, the first chapter. Titus, the little old book right after Timothy. Titus 1 and 16, ain't it? Titus 1 and 16. Titus 1 and 16. Go ahead, brother. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being they, abominable and they, disobedient. They, con they, they profess that they know God with their lips. They're giving lip service, but their works, their fruits, their behavior, 
their obedience is contrary to everything the Lord say do. The Lord say, have no other gods before me. I'm the Lord that God. Have no other God before me. I'm a jealous God. What they say, we believe you, Lord. But December 25th, we still got to honor this, 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 this big guy in the red suit that bring our kids toys. The Lord said, don't have no other God for me. We believe you, Lord. But on Easter, you know, we have to give the kids the Easter eggs. We believe you, Lord, but we have to worship the sun God on Sunday. But we still in your corner. We still want to get raptured off to heaven. And the Lord, just, he said, the Lord just said, and he, he laughed. He said, okay, I'm going to rap you off. Wait on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait on the rapture and see what happens. But go ahead, go ahead and uh, finish that. Your middle 16, being abominable and disobedient. And unto every good work, reprobate. And for Erica, they say, Lord, we did marvelous work in your name. But Lord say, but to every good work, you're reprobate. For every good work, you have, you have rejected. And the Lord don't give us anything hard or complicated to do. If you read those commandments, you meet those laws, those statutes, they're not hard to do. They're, they are not difficult. You take some discipline. But, uh, but let's, go, let's go to Galatians, the sixth chapter. Back up to Galatians 6. But it takes some discipline to do that thing, but it's not hard. And once you start doing it, once you start obeying the Lord, doing the Sabbath day, doing the feast days, keeping the dietary law, it is easy. It's coming like second nature. Now, Friday, everybody in here, Who's, who's a regular, on Friday evening when the sun, we, we, scamp, we, we scrambling around trying to make sure we get what we need done before sundown. It's just habit now. Come Friday now, you, you think about what I got to do I gotta, before sundown. You know, when the feast coming up, you automatically know what you got to do. When you get ready to eat something, when you go to the restaurant now, you automatically look and read and see what's in it. You know, it just becomes second nature. So it's not difficult. It's not hard. Like, like uh, uh, there's one pastor telling tell everybody, you can't keep them old laws. They're too hard. No. The Lord say, don't kindle the fire on the Sabbath day. What if you accidentally start a fire? Then you done broke the Lord's word. You done, broke, you done, you done transgressed the law. But the Lord say, if you sin willfully, if you sin willfully. But what's wrong with getting your food ready on Friday enough to carry you through the, through the Sabbath? Nothing. But like I said, the Lord said, beware of them false prophets. They come in sheep clothing. Hell yeah, they come in a money suits, looking all sharp, looking all good. Then you got a brother come up like me in a Walmart suit, cost about $6 <laughs> off the clearance rack. Now, that brother don't know what he's talking about. Look at that. Look at that, that suit. He, that's not even a tailor-made suit he got on. You know. But they, they respect us a person. But uh, where are we, Galatians 6? Mm-hmm. And let's pick it up at 3, 6 and 3. 6 and 3. Go ahead, brother. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So if a man put himself on a pedestal, he think he's all that, then he deceives himself. He's not deceiving nobody else. And certainly not deceiving the Lord. And half the time, you're not deceiving the people around. You know when somebody flies and they come to you, always boasting. Man, I got this and that, man. You know, man, they, they see you drive up a new car. Man, man, I like your car. I got three new cars. And I just bought them yesterday. I would have rode them today, but my, my bike, I'm ridden my bike in the ride. Wow, so I decided to ride my bike to work today. 30 miles, and you got three new cars at home. 
So they're not deceiving anybody but themselves. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So examine yourself, your own work. Do that self-check so you can rejoice. So, so you know, always check yourself. Make sure you stand on track. Doing what thus saith the Lord. And you know, and then in yourself, you know, well, you know, I'm doing the best I can to keep up with this thing. And you don't have to worry about what other folks think about you or trying to impress nobody else. You know, but we're brothers and sisters. We're supposed to be a bum. We're supposed to help each other out. Sometimes my wife, after I, I, I get a little beside myself, I know y'all don't believe it. Y'all say, that brother McKinley, he got it going on. Yeah, I'm a hell of a guy. I pet myself sometimes. That brother, yeah, I'm great. But my brother, my, my wife sometimes, she have to, all right, preacher man. Now I, all right, wife of a preacher man. But you got to check yourself. Check yourself. Because if you put yourself on a pedestal, you're deceiving nobody but yourself. But uh, go ahead. Verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. Every man shall bear his own burden. The Lord had to bear his. Jesus had to bear his own burden because you're going to have to pay for your own actions, whether they're good or bad. You're going to have to pay for it. Uh, skip to 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's why I say, that's why I say you deceive yourself because God is not going to be deceived. He's not going to be mocked. And whatever you sow it, that's what you're going to reap. There's no way. That's why the Lord said you'll know a, 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 a tree by his fruit. There's no way you're going to do be evil and wicked and think you're going to get a righteous reward. That just doesn't make sense. And if, you, if you go out there and plant some, some corn seed and you, you cultivate it, you're pulling up, the weeds, you're watering it every day. When the harvest come, you're going to expect corn. That's right. You're not going to go out there, you know you're planting corn, go out there looking for some watermelon. Man, I planted that corn and didn't know watermelon come up. So you, but you can't deceive the Lord. What you sow is what you're going to reap. But go ahead, brother. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Okay, he that worried about this flesh, this, this, these worldly things, that's going to be your reward. Go ahead. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. But he that is concerned about this spiritual thing, this spirit, I mean all of the Word of God, that's spirit. Obeying the Lord, then your reward would be with those matriarchs and patriarchs, with Moses and Abraham and Rahab, Rahab the harlot. All of them, that's where your reward will be. And that's what, that's what we're working towards. That's what we're working towards. But let, uh, you finished that? Let's go to Matthew 16, chapter. Matthew 16. And pick it up at 24. Back up to Matthew 16 and 24. Sixteen and twenty-four. Go ahead, brother. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Because Jesus had to bear his own burden. I mean, we have to bear our, we have to be responsible or we are going to be held accountable for our own action. The Lord is going to hold us accountable for what we do what we say, how we treat people. But go ahead. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. He's talking about in, in, this, in this worldly, this fleshly realm. If you're more concerned about the things of this world 
and the material things. Now, the Lord don't say you, you, don't, you can't have anything. You shouldn't have anything. You shouldn't live comfortably. The Lord never told you that. He just said he'll provide for you. But don't put that as your priority because if, if that's all you're concerned about, that's your reward. That's what you're going to get. But go ahead. But what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So what is it profit you that you should gain the whole world but then end up in the lake of fire for eternity, for just a moment of pleasure, a moment of, of sin? You're going to give up your eternity? You'd rather live a little comfort in this life and, and pay for it forever in the lake of fire, then suffer a little in this life and live forever in the kingdom. That just don't make sense. The, the, the scales just doesn't balance. It doesn't balance. But go ahead. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? But now I know I would give nothing. I don't care how many shrimps they bring for me. <laughs> they bring a boatload. Brother, you want these shrimps? I don't know. <laughs> you know. Now that I know better, but go ahead. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. He shall reward every man according to his what? Works. His works. Your fruits, your behavior, your obedience. That's why the Lord, when they told the Lord, we did the glorious works in your name. But it wasn't the works of the Lord. Those works were, were not righteous. He said, I would accord every man according to his works. But if you don't need works, all you need is faith. What works he going to uh, 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 reward you by? What barometer, what criteria is it the Lord going to use to judge? If you don't have to do anything but believe and confess in the Lord, what criteria, how, how can the Lord determine if you get in the kingdom or go to the lake of fire? What measure can he measure you by? It just doesn't make sense. But that's what people want. They, they, they want to do what they want to do and still get the same reward. And just think about it, people. If your boss man was to come to you and say, oh, when you come to work, just, just do what you want to do. Just do what you want to do. You're still going to get a full paycheck with, or with overtime on it. You know, but when you come, just, just do what you want to do. I show up every day with a sleeping bag. <laughs> Goes in the break room, put on CNN. At 5 o'clock, get up, roll my sleeping bag up, go to the house. But if you was to do that every day on your job now, would you expect a paycheck at the end of the week? You expect a pink slip, wouldn't you? Is that what the Lord gonna do? All those people think they supposed to get paid even though they did not do the works of the Lord, they're gonna get their pink slip at the end of the day. And that slip gonna say, go straight to the lake of fire, do not pass go, do not collect $200. 